Hello, Internet. Welcome. In the last two episodes, we did um, kind of a design review. It was a bit underwhelming because the outcome of this review was mostly questions and not so not so many answers. But that's just sometimes how it is, and it's. I think it's good to clearly formulate questions that one has about. Um, about the design and the code and it's better to better to clearly formulate questions than to deceive oneself and pretend to make some some progress in a design review where actually one is still trying to find out the question one, one needs to answer but now I think uh, we we start to have some answers and today we will um, rework our code to incorporate uh, the design changes that we came up with uh, as a result of the review. I think I will start with something easy so we decided to remove the look ahead functionality connected to the peak function for now at least, so maybe I will add some smart look ahead mechanics later, but I will only do that when I have a better understanding of what I actually need, so I think currently I don't really need any um, thing like that, there's only a single place that uses them and it will be easy to, to change that, so I shouldn't set this to done yet, uh, it's not deserved, but this is this is the first thing we will do. <clears throat> this is a small change that we can where we can still keep our code running. Later we will uh, have bigger changes that will break the code for for a while. So it's just about removing this function, and we do have some. Yeah, this one is removed then. This one is removed. This one. Those are, are much the, the peak character functions are much easier. Look ahead functions that only look ahead as a single character, and these ones we keep, and these ones are used a lot actually. So we actually need to search only for peak that is at the ending of a word. Oh no, not seek. Peak. Yeah, this is this is gone. This is also gone. It's incomplete anyway. And this is the only place that uh, that uses these functions. So we will actually uh, just use the data stream. Hmm. <laughs> I think we will use maybe maybe get character I mean this is this is not fast the way we are implementing this but um, I, I don't expect this hexadecimal parsing to be critical in the PDF parser, so that should be fine. So the question is, this will return zero. Um, this will return zero if we are at the end of the stream. So let's look what the byte decode 
table will give us for zero. It will give us a white space code and that is smaller than zero. So we will get here, we will hit the error case here. And actually then, so in the error handling here, we could, we could check if we reach the end of the stream. That I think that will be nice to do because, so let's check here if, um, So that's the condition if we do not get any if we did not get any byte from the yeah is this the I think this should be should be right, yeah. So in this case, we will say um, Unexpected and a file um, expected hexadecimal byte. And this is actually no longer <laughs> We have a bit of a problem here because this function actually okay it checks It checks whether it has space in the buffer only afterwards. That's why we need it to peak. So here actually it's not it's not relying on, on peaking ahead, so it's not relying on not consuming. So the characters, so this we can So here we have the, the hash mark. So the hash we will consume the hash character here. And this will be renamed from peak to pass hex byte or something. And okay, we will not enter any of the other clauses here, so this should be this should be fine. The problem is this one here because I think this one will it will simply need to do the check before. So if we don't have bytes left in the buffer, we will return immediately. Otherwise, we will consume the hash mark. Mm. 
then we will do this and we don't need that and we will rename the peak hex byte into parse hex byte because it now is a consuming parsing function Let's see if things still work now. Okay, of course this takes this takes arguments. <clears throat> and actually I should look for if we have if we have other instances. Bitos peak is fine. That's something different. So test PDF parser is still working. So let's in the meantime, let's run the rest of the tests and let's go back to our to-do list. And so this is done, sorry. This is done. Is there something else that we can um, I think we can do part of this, at least let's do some, some part of it that we can still do by keeping tests running. So we do no longer want to have this report mode data member. This is gone. And here we will for now just always do the, the auto detection of the report mode. And let's make this a function parameter. Let's just wait for the JB2 test to pass. This is slower than necessary because it currently does a lot of debug dumps that I should disable at some point, or at least conditionally, conditionally disable. Yeah, that is, that is done because, or, or at least let's say that this is okay because this is, we just reconfirmed a decision that was already made in the in current code.
yeah this removal of, of the length data member this will break some code um, so this we will do a bit later Wow, oh, this test is taking so long. So maybe then the next thing I will do is to to disable a lot of the debug of the debug dumps. Okay, it's passed. So let's do that so that we don't get insane waiting for tests to pass. So let's use a macro for and I think we should look for something like this. Okay, we do we do error checking here. This is something we can move to the macro. So let's break the lines here somewhere to make this more reasonable. Okay. Yeah, there's really no point in running the micro bench actually. I should remove this from the list of tests that we run.
So. Let's see if things work. Still. I have too much CPU load. I I will need to find a way, a way to make OBS use less CPU, I guess. So should be much faster now. Um, let's see, it used to take 200 seconds. Let's see how long it takes now. Still too slow. Actually, we might do something like this that we at least avoid avoid generating syntax errors in some cases where it's not good to completely remove code. Still so slow, this is surprising. I thought that the uh, debug dumping was most of the effort. Okay, bees. it got twice as fast, but it's still still way too slow. So this is partially done. Yeah, this is there's nothing to do here. That's just 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 a decision that we confirmed. Uh, this needs some documentation here. Yeah, we will do this later. So I think the next thing I will do is I will start to move the data stream code to its own source file because by now I think it's getting large enough that this makes sense. Its own source file and its own namespace. And then we will remove the length. We will remove the length. Um, which actually requires, so this requires us to, um, to create something like a test data stream to be used for, for tests because currently we actually use the default implementation of the interface for tests. And this will no longer work when we don't have the, the length uh, data member. I don't have a good working position currently, so I'm 
I'm a bit strained. I need to improve my setup here. Ergon ergonomically. So why is fussing taking forever? Let's just let's just start with the with the header. So we will have a namespace data stream, I guess, something like that. We will certainly um, need the status uh, system for error reporting. So let's see what do we? Yeah, probably probably want some. We want to use that namespace. So this will all go to. This will all go to the new header. Yeah, there's more stuff. So the inflate stream will also, inflate data stream will also go there. All these functions, also the bit source will go there. About the parse functions, I'm not sure. Maybe some of the parse functions are so generic that we will be able to move them to. I'm not sure about that. I no longer do the double blank between functions. Do we need memory somewhere? Yes. So we do need the memory system for the set for the inflate stream. Maybe we could get away without the using here because it's it's only here and here. So we will need the setlib headers. And we probably do no longer need them here. Do we need any standard headers? Uh, certainly the, the integer types we need an integer types, that's for sure. We probably don't need anything else. Assert, we need assert. So, we need this. Yeah, maybe int types, but I don't think. I'm always switching in the wrong way here. So, do we have any data stream stuff left? Only use a code, I think. So, 
So now for the source file. Probably won't need setlib directly here anymore. We certainly will need in types and standard arc. Or as a string, I guess. Standard IO, maybe not. We will need string assert. We have on the header. We, yeah, these ones for sure we will need. Uh, we maybe should. I mean, this is something that we probably should do in the memory header. But for now, let's also to be safe, let's do something like this here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is something that we will probably need because the file the file implementations will call that. So we probably should move that. We will move that to the status header, uh, start to the status system. Which means we need windows here. Yeah, I never know about the indentation if I really want, if I have the, this is something that I don't like so much about namespaces that I don't really want to indent everything in my source file just because of the namespace. Is there by now, is there a way to specify namespace code for the rest of file? Probably not. So we have moved this. Yeah, this is something that, yeah, all of this, this will move to the, this is data stream stuff. We will move that. The inline functions will actually have to go to the header. most of this will be in the header. We 
lots of code actually. So the, the data stream subsystem is not the smallest part of our code. That's a bit surprising to see or to realize really. Okay, up to here. And we will need to move a lot of that into the header. So all the inline stuff we need to move to the header. Probably the seek this should all yeah this should also be in line. Why does this not work? This should... Why? Oh, it's, it thinks it is a C, not a C++ header. Why? Why that? No. Maybe the file time is the file type is is wrong. No, it's not wrong. I don't know. So what else needs to go to the header? So also I will get rid of the double blanks that I do no, no longer use. Yeah, this should be in line, in line. The backwards functions probably not, I don't care too much about them. So get character, maybe get character, peak character, maybe peak character. Backward stuff will remain here. This also needs to be rewritten.
So we also will need Windows headers here for the file access. Oh, we actually implement the predictors here. That's a quite PDF specific thing. So maybe maybe this should actually be The predictor implementation should maybe be moved to something more PDF specific. So I think let's let's try to get things compiling first after this and link compiling and linking first nothing will compile of course Okay predictor type here we already have the problem that this is yeah this is really too PDF specific to put in the data stream subsystem directly but for now we need to move it Oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. I hit the wrong key. Predict the stuff. Oh, so the predictors are not fully implemented. So, so far I've only implemented one of the PNG predictors. Data stream thing should be void, I guess. And this other color scheme messed up our highlighting. I hate that. Yeah. Again, we have, okay, we. Maybe we should even use the Windows min here so we don't need to include algorithm. Or even rewrite it as a ternary operator. Okay, we need the C int types probably here. Fail here. Fail here is something that is ours that we should also move. And we also need to rework that, I think. <coughs> Sorry. Let's put this somewhere at the beginning. 
Yeah, I really need to make up my mind for the indentation. Maybe I will just indent everything and lose the four characters of screen space everywhere. Don't like that so much. I also don't like so much the order of things in this header. <clears throat> so I also <clears throat> so we do have the wrong number of arguments here why probably because of some earlier error No, no, no. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Do we have? Do we have an overload here or did I just not, did this never, f did this never match the prototype? I guess this never matched the prototype. Yeah, I never updated the prototype correctly. <clears throat> Don't you love prototypes? I should also get rid of the size T. Okay, we are, uh, we proceeded to linking errors. Because we of course need to add, add data stream sources here. Okay, we have we have several of those probably. Mm. 
It's taking a long time, which is a good sign in this case. So we are probably linking some stuff. Yes. So let's run a test and it is passing. We did some code movement and we did it correctly, it seems. Let's see if he still <clears throat> have some stuff lying around that is yeah maybe this very generic parsing this we can decide later Lots of JV2 stuff. Lots of debugging, debugging code, which I also should at one point move to a separate file. So here we already have all the parsing functions. Lots of PDF parsing going on here. But no data stream stuff, that's fine. That's the fax decoding stuff. Now comes the whole JB2 stuff. Mm, JPEG 2000 stuff, PDF file, that's the last things in the file, yeah. Okay, that's the namespace PDF file. No, not flint file. Okay. Yeah, I think I will do these. We'll do these earlier. So actually, why does this not work? This is driving me crazy. 
we have 1000 lines of data string code here and so all together we have one and a half k that's quite a lot So the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this length data field here. But this requires that I actually create a test data stream. I always put test stuff into its own namespace test <clears throat> yeah now we will actually need a derived class because we will put this length so this is all pass fine we will actually put this into the derived class. Why don't I? I put this here. And these functions, they will go to so the test data stream is a data stream that comes from memory and that will later get some specific test functionality like randomizing the fetch block sizes and also forward injection. Test dummy fetch, where do we do this actually? I have no idea. Oh, this is just an implementation detail, I guess. So these will move, these will be moved inside here. Let's stay in a buff. That's this one. Off. Yeah, this is Hmm. This will also go here. The test buffer. We could actually make this a static local variable here. Let me just restart Vim so we get back decent highlighting because I hate it when this is not working. So
I mean the test data stream will for sure be need will for sure need to be reworked. Let's see if the yeah now the alternating also works. That's great. So test data stream. This will need a lot of changes in our unit tests for sure. So let's get this started right away. Yeah, it is already beginning. This is of course now. This will be, actually this will be this will become a normal fetch function of the of the test data stream. Yeah, now it's already starting that. Okay, we are seeing that this is a problem here because here we actually don't want to use the test data buff. This is not so nice. So we will add this to our to-do. Don't know exactly where. So part of our, so the test data stream currently does two things. It, it does a simple in-memory um, in memory stream buffer where the whole stream is in memory. And it also does test functionality and we need to separate those into uh, a shallow hierarchy probably. Yeah, this is in data stream test, which is intentionally ugly here because we shouldn't really using test functionality here. Okay, what's the problem here that we have the semicolon? Also here. Okay, length. Ah, yeah, now the problems are starting because this is actually, I mean, this is actually, anyway, this is wrong. Should be something like this and then we should then we should try to get extra context for error reporting. This is something that a point that is still open from our design review. Data stream advance. Okay, this is actually test this is test stream test stream functionality so here we should have something like that that if we don't have advance 
Stream does not support advanced And then this will move to the test to the test data stream. This will become the advanced function of the test data stream. So what is the signature of advanced? It has it must have the status, it must have the test data stream, and it must have in an offset, I guess, right? up my window handling here so we will have here advance function is data stream advance function test data stream advance yeah this is simply gone This is also oh for a file data stream we need it we need the length. Maybe this should actually not be length, but buffer size or something in this case, because it's not the file length or anything. Probably also this one should become buffer size. Yeah, this needs to be rewritten anyway. Where are we here? We are in inflate data stream in it. Okay, inflate data stream probably also needs a buffer size. Still inflate data stream. Inflate data stream will need a buffer size. Okay, the size T will actually be I hate size T, I'll change that to length. And let's change that to buffer size. And 
And let's also change that to two. So let's get rid of all the size T's. I really hate them because you never know what you get with size T. You never know what you get. Let's just see if we have a set format anywhere for size T, no. Size T is gone, that is nice. Yeah, that's a problem I have with namespaces. I'm really not too happy how the namespace thing is working out. I'm not too happy about that at all. I shouldn't use these, these very generic namespace names like test. On the other hand, if you cannot use nice names, what's the point of namespaces? Where was this size T? What's the point of namespaces then? I'm really not sure. We cannot use nice names. I'm... <laughs> I'm really considering getting rid of all the namespaces. Do I have to do that everywhere now? Yes. That's horrible. Right now I'm really starting to dislike namespaces a lot. I mean, maybe it's just me that I'm using bad names, but... Okay, now we are getting these. So here we definitely need... Uh, we need a test data stream. And we will need a... Let's make a mark off for that because we will need to do that a thousand times now.
So actually let's improve our macro. Uh, we will change to either white space, so either word boundary or underscore. So either word boundary or Will this work? I'm not sure. Will this work here? No. So we will need to do that here. Yeah, now it works. All of these. And these all will need the, ah, oh, that's, that's horrible. So let's do a search and replace for these. So at the beginning of a line, when we have test colon colon uh, this will need to become so let's let's capture the white space this will need to become white space uh, this. yeah And all of these will need to become like this. There will be so many. Probably we should do a search and replace also for this because I, I don't think there will be, I don't think here there will be any other cases. So if this is the start of the word, let's just replace all of them and let's replace data stream in it something by test data stream in it something and do the same thing here we are in in the first test no 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 you should not press the wrong keys as a programmer okay now same problem here with the test so let's start to also do this this stuff here ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. that's really hard should i get rid of all the namespaces they are starting to get on my nerves i think also here i mean in the actually we should be using namespace test in the tests right because 
that's kind of the point of it. No, no. That was really a bad idea to use this nested namespace test. But maybe now we can get rid of all these colon colon test stuff. Why we are using namespace test test data stream? Shouldn't this be? Oh, because this is, yeah. Because this is actually in in data stream test. And we probably should always put the colon colon first. Yeah, that's fine. Now we get yeah. Where do we still do we still somewhere do this without the yeah, probably this one is. Where is the oh it's in the macro somewhere. Yeah, here. I should really clean up my namespace game. Where are we here? We are in test. So using namespace test and using namespace data stream test should make sense. Huh? Okay, we cannot cast because we have the wrong data type. Where do we, here, here, this is the wrong one. Actually, if we do using namespace test, we should be able to remove those but That is so annoying. And then I will also have all of these and all of these ones. Thank God for the history. Okay, now we need a using data stream. I mean, those two, I don't mind those, they make sense. We, we say, okay, now we are using test stuff. That's fine with me. 
Hmm. I mean, these should anyway use the fully qualified thing, I guess. Everywhere we should everywhere use the fully qualified stuff here. That's also fine with me in the Marcos. Okay, that's the next test file. So same stuff that we have everywhere. Oh, the length will be a problem. Yeah, I already see it. This is no buffer size. Here we do due to limited. Buffer. Yeah, okay. This is this is something that we need to clean up. I think that was the most annoying part of the refactor was this test test stream stuff. And I think we should be close to, to being done. Actually, I should maybe get rid of all of these now that we are doing the using. Okay, another one. We have so many test files, I'm not aware of that. Which one is this? This is Microbench. Does this have a data stream? Yeah, it does have a data stream. But it doesn't use it, does it? Does it not use?
We should be close to the end of this annoying test stream. The movement, yeah. Okay, test is still working. Great. That was the most annoying part, I think. We cannot even, oh, we can, yeah, this one. We can set something to done, that's satisfying. <clears throat> Hey, I got viewers. How did that happen? I got viewers. So please tell me what's up if you're watching. Or if you have any questions. I mean, I guess we are not doing the most rocket science stuff currently. So, but still. Just drop your questions in the chat. If you have any. Our tests are so slow. This will be, <clears throat> I think this will be a focus stream coming up soon is to speed up our testing because this is, our cycle times are getting much too, too long just because of the testing. We will need to focus on that, but that is, <clears throat> after the stream refactor. What could we do next in the stream refactor? This is a more interesting thing, like to try out how we want to handle end of, end of stream because I'm leaning towards the second option here to not have separate data members for end of file and start of file. I'm leaning towards that and I need, for, for making the final decision, I need to I need to try this, what this means for the user code. So this, this could be the next thing we do. We might be doing a longer break before that. I'm not sure. Maybe we could start it at least. Let's maybe start by, let's start by looking at the, at where we, where we are using the, <clears throat> the end of file currently when this stupid test has passed. Wow, why is this taking so long? Our debug build is really too slow. <clears throat> So yeah, that's the next thing to look, to look for uses of the end of file data member and start to refactor them. At least we passed, that's something. So let's go, let's see, do we have a Perl here? Yes, that's nice. Because that we have a Perl here means that we have my beloved Ak. Let's search for word and the file. Does this work? Um, not really that well. Oh, we have, we have, what is this huge? Uh, probably is, is looking, is this in the, in the C scope? Out that is finding so many.
Yeah, it's in a C scope. Okay, we need to get rid of that. So why is Ark not smart enough to ignore C scope dot out? That's a bit underwhelming. Also the code files, it really should not. That's not so nice. That's not so nice. I think we will do a full clean because that's stupid. And the clean should actually also remove the C scope out. I actually am no longer using C scope here because it doesn't work with C. I use it for some sub project that uses only C. So let's re -uck. That looks more reasonable. So actually the before stuff, we can get rid of that. Oh, it doesn't even, it doesn't even ignore text. That's so stupid. Okay, we still have in the open JPEG, we still have this one. Actually, we don't need any third party stuff here. We don't need this. So there's not that much left. So let's load this as our quick fix file. How did this work? Does, is this C file? Yes. C file found. Okay, now we can quickly go through all the notations where we... And we actually, we are, we are interested only in the user code occurrences. So not not the ones where we actually signal the the end of file ourselves. Because here we could, for example, what we would do here, is just to set Actually, we wouldn't need to do anything at all. We would just we would just return, and that's it. So that's fine. The initialization, of course, would be gone. Uh, backwards will be rewritten anyway, so that's a non-issue. Backward stuff. For example, for this, get, get bytes. This could be very simple because here we would just, that's a good example. Here we would just check if, if we don't have any bytes now, by now. So if, we do, if pointer is equal to end, and that's it. That's our end of file condition. If, we di if the fetch did not give us any new data. Yeah, I think I, I think, I think I want to rename this. I think it should be read bytes or something because this is implementing the semantics that you usually is expect from a C library read function. And here, if we don't have the end of file here,
we try to refetch. That's the, that's the main difference if we don't have the end of file mark data members, that we try to fetch again. If we hit end of file and we again get a call to get available bytes or read bytes, then we try again to fetch. That's the, that's the main difference. I, the question is, could this be a problem? I think we will define it like this. If that would be a problem for a particular implementation of the stream interface, this implementation itself is responsible for catching this case. And it can have its own end of, end of data, data member for that. So uh, what we will do is not this, what we will do here is if we still have no data, then we just give up here. That's it. Should I really do, should I do the refactoring right now? I'm not sure. Let's, let's first change the user code where we can easily get rid of the end of file. This is a, a middle case where we are actually implementing a stream interface, but also using a stream interface. So if the upstream, follow upstream, Okay, that's a more difficult case. But I think this is actually, this will just go away. This is just, this is actually an artifact of having these end of file data members. Because here, what we are doing here is we are trying to keep multiple data members consistent with each other. And that's actually, that's exactly one of the reasons why you want to reduce your number of data members in, in structures, because the more data members you have, the more consistency conditions you have between them. And So what we are actually doing here is to keep the end of file condition from upstream consistent with our count of bytes left to fetch. And this is something that we no longer will need to do once we have no longer, well, once we do no longer have this end of file data member. So that's actually not a problem. Yeah, this is providing providing the value. This we for for now we will only look at using the value, not providing the value. Okay, assertion. This is yeah, backwards will be reworked anyway. This is something to avoid to avoid refetching. And maybe the inflate data stream, maybe this will need something like that. But maybe the setlib, the setlib structures already have something to that, that arrays to that. So this we will still, Okay, so maybe for, for the inflate data stream, we will need some kind of refresh prevention. Let's see, but that's not a big problem. Yeah, post condition will be, this will be redocumented anyway. That's also refetch prevention here. Mm. 
this will just go away okay this we will yeah this is another consistency thing that will just go away um, and here we will just check if the buffer pointer is at the end we did not get any data and that means we hit end of file because we do not support any asynchronous return when we don't have yet data data yeah same here if pointer equals end then we return zero very simple same here Same here. Same here. So all of the, the this is a good sign that all of these changes are so easy. That is a good sign for our for our tendency that we that we uh, uttered in the design review that we want to get rid of these end of file data members that all these changes are turning out to be so easy is a very good sign okay that is in no that's actually exactly the same case here we do the fetch and here we can we repeat while pointer is not the, at the end. Also very simple. Skip command body, yeah. Also very simple change. Same here. I just pressed the, no. I don't, <laughs> yeah, like this. Yeah, all of them are the same because they are directly after the fetch call and that's the critical thing we are always checking for end of file directly after fetch and then we can use this condition always after fetch that's very nice Okay, this is a slightly different case. Here we make a peak character, a peak character, but this can also check the same condition. Because if a peak character returns with an empty buffer, then we know we didn't get any data. Okay, what about this test decoding function? Well, not end of file. That's that's fishy anyway, because it is starting a bit source here. That's very fishy code anyway. That's not looking good, because it it is messing with the messing with the buffer pointers here starting a bit source and then using the end of file mark that's not that's not very nice
That was something I did for, for profiling. That's very dirty. Actually, we have a break here and this breaks already several bytes before end of input. So probably we can just make a while two out of that. But this is, I mean, this is anyway crappy code. So let's not think very too much about that. Yeah, that's that's a horrible hack. Workaround due to limited buffer says hack st stop before we hit end of stream. I think that was before, that was probably because our data stream bit source couldn't handle end of file correctly. But we changed this actually. So let's make a note. Can we clean this up now that our bit source can handle end of file cleanly? Okay, these are test expectations. So we What we actually want to say here is skip white space. We we want to we want to check that this actually reached the end of the data stream. I mean, I think the best we can do here is uh, to expect equality of pointer and end. That's probably the best we can do here. Okay, and those were our user code end of file uses. Okay, what's going on here? Am I the wrong directory? No. Maybe because of the cleaning I did. Yeah, the cleaning is the problem. So we first need to create our directories again. We, we will also need to copy some DLLs because that's not yet automated. We need, which DLLs do we need? We need the open JPEG. We need the JPEG, the J2 codec where we are having this um, yeah, the evalu evaluation version of the J2K codec we need, and we need the open, open JPEG DLL. DLL coping, this is really. Oh, it's called expect EQ, not expect echo. So the only interesting case where we had the end of file being used is in the inflate data stream. Yeah, things are still working. The inflate data stream we will maybe need to take a look at. 
maybe we'll just give it its own end of compressed data member and we will remove the end of file archive from all the other streams and then we can later remove locally the we can remove it for for inflate data stream if the inflate data stream doesn't really need it we can remove it that later but that's of no concern because that's not in the interface i i want to clean up the interface mostly now that's that was the initial motivation for the design review mostly now that we have a couple of weeks couple of weeks um, experience with the data stream subsystem i felt that it was the right time to reconsider some design decisions and to clean up the interface so we have a more robust um, base on which to to work on from now on so i think this is all working yeah it's passing so let's do it let's simplify our data stream interface further it already got a bit simpler and now we will remove the end of file data member here and then we have only we have only four data members left and the, of course the function pointers only four that's very nice and all of these we need we cannot get rid of any of these and here we should actually say from start of the most underlying um, byte to byte related stream So let's just collect a lot of errors and go through the quick list, the quick fix list. Okay, this is just this is just consistency. This is gone now. Because the best way to be consistent is to have nothing that could be inconsistent. Also here, this is gone. We can just invert this check. Yeah, this is easy. This needs to be rewritten, but from now it's this check. Same here. Gone. Gone. Uh, all these nodes, uh, I really don't want these nodes in a quick fix, I think. Uh, maybe should change that. Okay, this is the consistency thing that is also gone now. But what we might need to do is if we do a fetch. Okay, but this is done automatically here. That's nice. Because if we, if we get zero bytes from the upstream, we do actually set this to zero here. That is nice. So that's not an issue. Fetch. This is providing this stuff. It's no longer needed. Yeah, this is also. So updating this with seek is no longer needed.
fetch backwards in file. Yeah. Backwards parsing is a mess currently. Fetch, actually this is fetch backwards. Should all of us have read one of my bytes here. This we will check differently. So we will check that we will check that something is in the buffer. Oh, okay, this is really fetch because we, we, we use fetch inside the fetch backwards. Yeah, that's a bit ugly. So also questions are removed, which is always a very good sign. So if you do a refactoring and that <clears throat> removes questions that you had about the code. Okay, now we are in inflate data stream. Um, let's give this an end of compressed, or let's end of inflate. So this will have this, its own This will have its own flag. We just will need to take care that this flag is really set. Okay, this is refetch prevention. This is no longer needed. This is consistency check that is no longer needed. This will get set to zero if we are at the end of file. Okay, we should check this result stream and well, should we check this result stream and hmm. Where do we set the end of file? Hmm. Oh here. I said it here, end of inflate. Maybe that was already everything. I might have something in and some test files left. Still working. We have done something that was to do. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, this was not yet. It is. We have. We have done this one. Try that in user code, and now we know that we will decide this way. So that's another decision.
So this is done. Great. So here we, we also let's we have decided this is a moot point now because that's only if the first one is yes also a pass that is so nice so let's run the full test suite Okay, I think it's a good, if everything will be passing, if everything will pass, it's a good point to make, take a break in this refactoring. I think it already cleaned up a lot of stuff. We will definitely need documentation for documenting the interface contract cleanly and so on. And there's still a lot of stuff to do, but the interface, the interface got already much cleaner. I think we removed like three data members or so. We also will, will document the contracts regarding these data members here like what is read only for the user code and what is read write and so on so only the only the buffer pointer is read write for user code everything else is read only Yeah, this will be renamed probably. Predictor stuff needs to go somewhere else. So we'll probably have an inflate data stream and then around that a thin, a thin wrapper that does the prediction stuff that is specific to PDF, I guess. Also, I'm not sure about the sequence of stuff in this file as I already mentioned. So maybe the, all the generic stuff should be first. It's really, headers are really such a mess um, now that they are inline functions. I mean, headers were no fun to start with, but since, since they are inline functions, they are really just a mess. Okay, everything passed. So, time for a break that was some productive refactoring that we did everything became much cleaner 
Uh, let's maybe take a short look at our code line counts. Should be here. Okay, not sure about that result. How do I say that it? Not by file, by file, not file. I did something wrong. Because this is not a realistic count. Are you kidding me? Why is it not? That's so strange. Oh, uh, not in my, I'm not in my source directory. That's the problem. Stupid me. Time for a break, as I said. 20K. Ah, but we are we are actually, yeah, I should get rid of this. This is no longer needed. This was before the memory refactoring. This was, I just kept this around for having a side by side check whether the code got more nice in the, because I don't, do not yet do full version control here. I do just do backups currently because I'm in prototyping phase. And let's run this again. 15K, that's more reasonable. And a lot of it is tests actually. Yeah, data stream is 800 lines about without the header. With the header, it's yeah, about a little above 1K. Reasonable numbers. Okay. Um, don't know if I will stream again today. Mm, I don't know if I will have time, but for sure the, the refactory will continue. And so thanks for watching for now. See you again. Bye.